Hey guys, it's Drummond. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you know whenever I'm posting my next video. So today's video is going to be about after the breakup. So what happens after you've been broken up with or you've broken up with someone? And honestly, I've been through several breakups, so I feel like I might be a little bit more of an expert on this than some. Most recently, I've had a lot of friends that have been going through breakups and a lot of them have been asking me for advice on this. So I figured that I would make a video since there's probably a lot of you guys out there that might also be struggling with this. So when it comes to being broken up with or breaking up with someone, whether it was a good relationship or a bad relationship, whether you wanted it to end or you didn't want it to end, there's a lot of changes happening in your life, mainly because there's a lot of emotions going on at that time. Because honestly, when you are dating someone, you're kind of planning your day and your life around them and your future as well as being planned around them. So when it comes to someone walking out of your life or you walking out of their life, a lot of changes are having to happen in your life. So when it comes to after a relationship ends, you really have to learn to focus on the positives. So you're most definitely going to experience a lot of negative emotions after a breakup. And that's even if you are walking out of a relationship thinking that it's the best thing for you, you still were connected to that person for an extended amount of time. So it's hard to move on and figure out what you want to do with your life after the relationship. So for me, I was always the type of person that I spent a lot of time with my friends. I was constantly filling my schedule with different friends and different activities just so that I was never alone because I feel like after a breakup, the worst time is when you're alone. So nighttime when you're laying in bed and you are sitting there thinking about the relationship and man, I wish that person was still in my life or man, what am I supposed to do now that that person isn't in my life anymore? And a lot of times after a breakup, people start focusing on they need to find somebody else, which is completely the wrong plan. Because if you're constantly thinking about, man, I need to find someone else, a lot of times you aren't focusing on the healing of yourself because a lot of times after a breakup, you get a lot of insecurities and you shouldn't be looking for someone else to bring into your life uh, when you're still dealing with all those insecurities. I know in the past when it's come to my relationships ending, for whatever reason it was, a lot of times my insecurities started popping up, whether it was, oh, am I not good looking enough? Oh, am I not smart enough? Oh, did I say the wrong thing? Instead of focusing all your energy on all the things that you thought maybe went wrong, it's better to just sit there and really focus on the insecurities that have popped up and really just sit back and try to figure out how you can erase those insecurities because when it comes to the next relationship you jump into, you don't want to pull all that baggage into the new relationship because I'll tell you right now, it is not that new person's job to fix the type of things that have happened from your previous relationships. So if you felt like your last boyfriend broke up with you because you weren't smart enough, then what parts of you do you feel like aren't smart enough? Because it has nothing to do with why they broke up with you. It has to do with the reasons why you believe that's the reason someone left you. And you wanna make sure that you heal those parts of yourself before you jump into a relationship. I know that I did a lot of reading. I signed up for a couple seminars for life coaching stuff, mainly because I do life coaching. After my relationship with Matt ended, I was actually working with several clients and I kind of dove into those clients and really was like, I'm gonna put all the effort into this. I was working at Chantel at that time and I was really enjoying my job there. And I was just like, I really need to focus on these types of things. And yes, when you deal with a breakup, depression sets in in the most awful ways, but you've gotta figure out ways to kind of roll with the punches. Don't pretend like you're not hurt because if you're hurt, let it out. Pretending that the breakup didn't affect you isn't going to help you heal. And when it comes to your next relationship, you wanna make sure that you're fully healed before you jump into that because if you're not fully healed, you're going to end up hurting that other person or hurting yourself more. I know after my relationship with Matt ended, I kind of jumped into my relationship with Curtis a little quicker than I probably should have. And I did end up bringing some of my insecurities from that breakup into my relationship with Curtis. The main insecurity that I developed after Matt and I broke up was, I felt like Matt and I didn't really communicate well. And I felt like there's a lot of signs that kind of popped up where it was like Matt was kind of ready for the relationship to end. And 
I didn't really pay attention to those. So in my new relationship, I was like super focused on anything that could be a sign for the relationship not going well. And for me, that made me very insecure in my new relationship with Curtis because when we first started talking, he would snap me all the time, ask me how my day was going. And then further into the relationship, it kind of started mellowing out and it was like one snap a day. I know that at some point our streak died and then there was like three days where he didn't snap me at all. And the insecurity was just like, oh my gosh, this is a sign that he's not interested in me. Something's wrong, I'm doing something wrong. And then I started asking him, I'm like, is everything all right? It got to the point where I was just like very insecure all the time and it got really draining just because it wasn't Curtis's fault that I brought that insecurity into the relationship. Granted, the relationship did end up ending. Do I know whether or not it was because of that insecurity kind of constantly rolling into the relationship? No. Uh, when Curtis and I broke up, he told me he just didn't feel it anymore. And I don't know if that was because I became a little bit clingy and needy because I needed him to show me that um, my relationship with him was healthy. So yeah, you really wanna make sure that you heal those insecurities before you fall into another relationship because you definitely don't wanna destroy something good with the negativity that's come from your previous relationship. Another thing is trying new things. I know that when a lot of breakups happen, you're kind of surrounded by the same scenery, the same people, the same job, the same room. So it's just like you're constantly faced with all the memories from that relationship. I know when it came to my relationship ending with Matt, I kind of rearranged my furniture in my room so that when I walked in here, it was a completely different room. I stopped going to all the places that him and I went to, which thankfully most of them were in Lynchburg and I wasn't in Lynchburg anymore. So the memories kind of stayed over there and I started my new life in Charlottesville. So it was really nice to kind of be able to move on in that way. Also, I feel like a lot of people need to just kind of cut out the activities that they were doing. So like, so when Curtis and I were dating, he played volleyball and I would go to the games with him. So that was something fun that we did. And there was also a couple hiking trails that we'd go running on. And honestly, it was kind of nice when I got my job as a trainer because I didn't have to go to Charlottesville anymore and I didn't have to see all the places that I'd gone to with Curtis. So it was kind of really nice to drop those types of things out of my life so they weren't constantly reminding me of him. I know for the longest time when I was driving past where Curtis worked, my brain would just constantly go, oh, I'm driving past where my ex-boyfriend worked. And it was just a constant negative memory. But now where I work, I don't pass that at all. So it's nice to not have to pass that and think that uh, now it's been a year since that relationship ended and it doesn't really affect me to drive past where he works or be around in Charlottesville or do any of the things that we did as a couple. So time most definitely does heal. So if you're going through a breakup right now, just know that the hurt that you're feeling, it will go away. You really just need to start doing new things and bringing new people into your life. I know that I found a new group of friends that was really helpful. Um, now that I'm getting a little bit older, I've really enjoyed having mature friends around me. And instead of them talking about other people and drama and all that fun stuff, they're talking about vacations and things that they're doing on the weekend. And it doesn't involve going to the bar and getting drunk every single time or going to a house party and getting drunk. It involves families and festivals and wine tastings and all these fun stuff that I'm really starting to learn how to enjoy. But hopefully this video has been helpful to any of you guys that are going through a breakup. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I love talking to you guys. And if you haven't already, I do Q and A's on Instagram, post tons of funny stuff on Snapchat, and I've got Facebook and Twitter as well. I love hearing from you guys. Hopefully you guys are having a great day and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.